What's up everyone? Welcome to Clown World News. It's your host Towels. And today we're going to talk about it it's clowns. It's it's probably always going to be clowns. But today's clowns play ball sports. So NBA ratings not doing too hot. What's wrong with the NBA ratings? Well, go woke, go broke. Uh people don't really like to watch their escapisms. Which that's what these entertainment games are. This is what watching sports is. You get to escape from the reality and just watch people really excel at an amazing skill-based game. Whatever. It's like that uh, Mayan game with the hip ball, except people don't get sacrificed at the end. It's only at the end of their career. But anyways, people don't really like watching the NBA at the moment or other sports at the moment because of how politicized they've gotten. And that just polarizes people. It's like, if you're not with us on this, then we don't even want to play. We don't even, like, LeBron James is trying to, like, lead some sort of, I don't know, movement. He, I mean, they're realizing, I guess, that they have a platform of some regard that they can influence people to do more than just buy sneakers. Wow. That's actually kind of nice that they're realizing this. But instead of, you know, utilizing this for anything really relevant, in my opinion... They're using it to attack Donald Trump and to get Joe Biden elected and to support BLM and all that other noise and to kneel and uh, not play games until something about justice happens. That's my big problem with all these BLM protests. There's no goal. If there was a goal, like a clear-cut goal, if the goal was police reform, these things should have ended like a week after they started because that police reform bill came down from the executive order like top-down pretty quickly. But we don't want that, I guess. It's We want this vague thing that nobody really knows what it is so that it can just keep going on and on. But I digress. We're not talking about LeBron James. We're talking about what the league should do. What should sports in general, not just the league of NBA, but the what should the sport people do? Should they maybe, I don't know, chill out with all the wokeness? Maybe just like stop being so political and just focus on playing the game? Nah, they should double down on that wokeness. And here we go. That's exactly what happens. So I'll give a link to this channel. You got ESPN College Football. We got Kirk Herbstreit. Let's listen to Kirk Herbstreit double down on some wokeness. From his point of view, one of the most important things about social justice is the fact that players now have their courage to openly discuss it. We've come a Mm. long way. It's about time. My thoughts are doesn't mean anything if nothing tangible comes from it. The challenge now is listening to the players and this possible discussions following reasonable requests. Listen to them and re- reasonable requests. That's my point. That's what he says is his point, but it sounds like you were reading from a teleprompter. So I don't know if that really was your point. But I don't know. I don't know who this guy is. He's probably famous. I'm sorry I don't watch college football. I don't really watch sports too much. I'm sorry. I'm just not that into it. But let's listen. Yeah, LC, I I think that... uh... (laughs) I'm sorry. This is about to get... Maybe it's serious. Whatever. We'll we'll look at the comments on YouTube afterwards. But if it is serious, then maybe it's sad and I'm being really in bad taste. But let's, let's... Let's see. Uh, I agree with with all of what you guys are saying. It's it's remarkable to see players have an opportunity to come together and that uh, this show and Maria has given them that platform to be able to express how they feel. And I think it's great. I, I also think that if, if you're a white player in these locker rooms, I think it's incumbent upon you to really help with the change. I saw Dylan Bowles there from Stanford involved. And I th- it's, it's incumbent on you, white people, white players. If you're not kneeling, if you're not tweeting about this shit, what are you doing? I think, uh, you know, Trevor I, uh, Lawrence at Clemson has been involved. I think it's one thing to, to have rallies. It's, a, it's one thing to skip a practice because of social injustice. It's one thing for the NBA and the NFL uh, to miss games, to, to make a statement. Those things are great. But my question is, what's next? What, what, what does that lead to? You go back to practice the next day. Um, what, what will lead to change? And I really think, I was talking to David Shaw, the head coach at Stanford, 
uh, who, who really, he and I had a great talk. I love listening to, to his wisdom and his thoughts. And he shared a, a, a quote uh, to me and reminded me from Benjamin Franklin. He said, justice will be served. Justice will not be served until those who are unaffected are as outraged as those who are. So that means we should go into restaurants and disturb people's dinners until they are as affected by my immaturity as I am. But that's my personal take. You know, there's lots of great aspects of these protests, a lot of good stuff, but it immediately got hijacked. You don't need to hear this from me. You probably already know it if you're watching this. But here's where it gets interesting. And I think that that's what I mean when I think I, our, the, the black community is hurting. If you've listened and the, the word empathy and compassion over these last four months, how do you listen to these stories and not feel pain and, and not, not want to help? You know what I mean? It's like the, wearing a hoodie and uh, putting, your, putting your, your hands at 10 and 2. Oh, God, I better look out because I'm, I'm, I'm wearing Nike gear. Like, what? What are we talking about? And so you can't relate to that if you're white, but you can listen. What are we talking about? That's a good question. What are you talking about? Wearing a hoodie and having to put your hands at 10 and 2? Wearing Nike gear? Anybody who wears a hood all the way up is going to look suspicious. That's just the facts. I said it in a video before. If you go to a grocery store and I wear a hoodie all the way up with a backpack on, I'm going to get followed. It doesn't matter if you're an old elderly man, it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. You're going to be prejudiced because of how you look. That's just what it is. But let's continue with his his emotional whatever. And <clears throat> you can uh, try to help because this is not okay. It's just not. It's not. And uh his friend is somebody else here is going to try to enter, like you know like okay let, he's let's, let's let's take this let's get this somewhere we just have, we got to do better man we got it we got to we got to and they put putting their heads down and everybody's just kind of like this is something like lock arm and arm and be uh, like lock arm and arm you see him scratches his neck like one of those uh, uh. we got to we got to like lock arm and arm and be together in a football locker room. That stuff is gone. It, those barriers are gone. And, uh, it just, we got to do it's, better. It's one of the things why sports can be such a leader in this area. It's happening. And let's all cry. Let's all cry about it. Like, yes, there are some sad things going on, but like, what are we even talking about, man? What are you talking about? This is the most vaguest thing you could possibly say and cry about. What are you saying? What are you crying about? Try to help because this is not okay. What? What are we talking about? That's what I'm asking you. What are you talking about? You said like five different keywords, but you didn't actually put the sentence together. Have you not? Okay, yes, there are sad stories, and I don't want to sound like those don't affect me emotionally, because they do. There are things that are very fucked up and sad. They happen. It happens. But I don't think it has to do with sports in this regard. And I think that there's a lot of things that happen to a lot of different people. And if we single out just one type of happening, we're going to create a false sense of reality. And that false sense of reality can be very dangerous, very damaging if a lot of people suddenly start believing this false sense of reality, this false narrative where everything sucks and everyone's out to get them. It's not true. It's not the case. There's proactive things that everybody can be doing on all sides of the situation. This type of shit though, getting on the internet, getting on TV, and this is this reminds me of those black and white videos of the celebrities being like, I take responsibility. Like, dude, but who the fuck are you talking? What? Who are you talking to? Your boss? Like, what is this? What is this for? But the people on YouTube did not appreciate this, as you can see in the 2.8k 
K downvote. The the ratio isn't too great for Kirk Herbstreit. Now maybe he genuinely was being uh, emotional and, and genuine. Maybe he was. It just comes across as like, yo, man. Not, I mean, I don't want to fault him for being emotional because it is an emotional topic. It can be, but it's just like, bro, you're a football player. You're you're a man. You know, like. You're not making much sense right now. You're not. The message is lost. What are you saying? You're just crying. Because of what? You're joining in on the virtue signaling. Weak men create hard times. Guardian of the West. Kirk, you're so brave for admitting to us that you're a bitch. Damn. I'm so sick of... I'm fucking sick of... of of this all this it's wearing thin kirk you will qualify to work at walmart after you guys finish killing sports only a grown man that's a liberal would act like that damn don't actually have the stomach to watch the virtue signaling just came here to see the comments i saw an interesting one last night i just can't find it at the moment How racist do you have to be to act like this so people think you aren't racist? <laughs> Two things. Benjamin Franklin did not say that. It's a completely fabricated quote. Franklin wasn't exactly woke. <laughs> Two, man up, Kirk. You're an embarrassment. Yeah. As a black man, this is pathetic. Damn, yeah. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Maybe I'm being a little too hard on him. Maybe he's... It, it's just like you guys are millionaires. You guys are millionaires who play a game. You do, you know very little about what's going on in the peasant world. Like I'm a dude who's talking to a camera on the internet. I barely know what's going on out there. But you are a millionaire. You guys should not be talking about this this political thing and this to this extent. Like just play the game. If you guys really want to do something positive for the world then cheer people up and get them to forget about this nonsense. Get them to focus on something positive. Like you said, because I know it to be true, that sports like this, they, they bring people together regardless of your race. The international martial arts community is incredibly diverse. That's one that I'm a, personally a part of. And anytime I go to those events, I see it. It doesn't matter. Like There are no international grudges there's no borders really it's just all people they might speak an entirely different language maybe they don't speak english at all but we all speak this one thing and that's the sport that we play and when we're playing that sport when we're there doing it none of this stuff exists none of this bullshit none of this virtue signaling none of this drama this pol politics exists it's just humans being human together and that's what i think you guys can do over at college football whatever you guys do you guys could do that but if you want to keep virtue signaling, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be good, especially because you, you don't play. The, these games don't broadcast on Lifetime. They don't broadcast on the Oxygen Network. It's ESPN. Man the fuck up. So regardless, I digress. Uh, maybe I'm being too harsh. Let me know what you think about all this. If I'm being too harsh or if he's being a little pussy bitch. I don't know. I don't know. But i tell you one thing. You should call your mom. You should be a good person. Stay vigilant. Take everything you hear with a grain of salt. Exercise. Eat good. Check your blood's pH levels. Make sure you're not too acidic. Drink a lot of water. If you support independent investigative journalism, I, this wasn't really independent investigative journalism. I just watched a video and talked shit about a guy crying. So, okay, if you support that, you can check out the description. But whatever. Yeah. Take care. Peace.